Lazarus died, was buried. Then Jesus came. He was raised from the dead. It was wonderful. Jesus died. The church was broken. Felt as if all hope was gone. And then he raised from the dead. And the church rejoiced. Stephen died. And there was no resurrection. The church had to deal with it. How do you deal with the death of a man that is so beloved and so sought after? And then it struck again, James died. That's the James that wherever you found Peter and John, you found James. Because those three were always where Jesus was. If you want to know where Jesus was, find Peter, find James, or find John. And James is killed by Herod. And there's no resurrection. And then Peter is captured. He's imprisoned. And the same fate waits for him. Herod has discovered that the Jewish people We're excited about the death of James. Get rid of this this radical group. We'll wipe them out. And it's a new experience for the church. What do you do? How does the church handle this type of thing? They've never had to handle it before. Before it's always been handled for them, but now something has to happen. What are we going to do? They decided on a prayer meeting. If that had been the church today, I wonder how many people would have come out. Because after all, it's just a prayer meeting. What do you expect to happen at a prayer meeting? It's just the faithful few that gather together and and they sing a song or read some scripture and they pray. But what do you expect really to happen? Something happened to us while we were on vacation. I got a call from my youngest son. He said, Dad, listen to this. And I heard this sound. I said, I don't know what it is. He said, Guess what I found? My spurs. How many of you remember that my spurs were given to me by Franny many years ago, Franny Graham, and I lost them. They disappeared. And some of you prayed that I would find them. Do any of you remember that? Some of you remember. Okay. Yeah. I didn't find them. Months went by. Years passed. They were gone. I finally just gave it up and said, I will never find them. Now, I particularly wanted them because Franny's dad was a real live cowboy. And these spurs were used by a real live cowboy out west. So they meant a lot to me, but they were gone. And then the other day, Ethan has to do an assignment for school on family history. And so he went to the attic and began to search. And lo and behold, he found the spurs. And he knew that I had been looking for them. They're really inconsequential. It wasn't going to make a difference in my life or anybody's life, whether I found them or not. But the Lord knew that I really wanted them. But the Lord spoke to my heart. And he said, I never forgot. I knew where they were. I have answered your prayer. I have answered your prayer. How many of you know that God does not go by our time clock? If God went by our time clock, 
We would think that he was the genie in the bottle, that we rubbed the magic lamp and he would go, poof, master, what can I do for you? But that is not God. God does not do those things because we are the master. We are the servant. And when God answers our prayer, there's always a purpose and a reason. I want to talk to you today a few minutes about the purpose and the power of prayer. The purpose of prayer is simple. It is not to accomplish things. The purpose of prayer is so that we can work with God to accomplish his will. He literally invites us to be a part of what he's doing. And so he has given us this privilege of prayer that we handle so lightly and use so loosely so many times. But he said, I gave you this ability to join me, to work with me, to accomplish my will. Now, may I say right up front, God does not need you to accomplish miracles. Are you with me? God could do it immediately by a word. It's done. It's over with. God looks down. He sees your need. He could just reach down and touch you, and that need would be met. You need finances. God could instantly just pour finances into your life. You, you need healing. God could just instantly heal you. You need whatever it is. God could just do it, but that would accomplish nothing in our lives except the meeting of some small need or big need in our life. We wouldn't be any better for it. We wouldn't be any stronger in faith for it. We wouldn't be closer to him for it. We would look at him as just sort of that, that great grandpa in the sky that does everything we want him to do. And we wouldn't get to know him. We wouldn't get to love him. We wouldn't get to fight along with him. Can I tell you, prayer is not fighting God to get God to do what God doesn't want to do. That is not what prayer is. Prayer is joining God in the battle against the forces of hell to accomplish the will of God. And God doesn't need you, but he wants you. God doesn't have to have you, but he has chosen this way so that you and I can come to know him in the depths of his being and we can become more like him and we can grow to love him for who he is and not for what he does. So many times we love somebody for what they do for us. But God says, I don't want you to love me because of what I do for you. I want you to love me for who I am. Remember, he is the great I am. And he says, I want you to know me as the great I am. And so the purpose of prayer is that we might come to know him that we might come to love him, that we might be a partner with him, that we might join with him. And when we pray, he hears us. The Bible says if you pray according to the will of God, he hears you. And if we know that he hears us, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. And so prayer is that joining with him, being a part with him seeing his will being accomplished and, and thrilling to the answers of prayer, not because we got something, but because we were closer to him in that moment. And we learned to love him more because we shared with him in the victory. If you ever watch soldiers... There is a brotherhood among soldiers. They love one another. They don't have to be the same skin color. They don't have to be the same economic level. But they have fought shoulder to shoulder. And they have shed blood together. And they are one. And they love one another. Because they have fought side by side. And they have seen the struggle that you have made and you've seen the struggle they've made and they have worked with you and you've worked with them and you become one with them. 
This is the purpose of prayer, is that we will so join with God that we become one with him. Jesus said, I and the Father are one. And he says, I want you to be one with me. I want you to have the same desires that I have. I want you to have the same enemies that I have. I want you to have the same friends that I have. I want you to have the same joy that I have. I want your, my joy to be in you until your joy is full. And he said, the only way I can accomplish that is to let you join me in the battle, to let you join me in the work. Now, I want to talk about the power of prayer. Do you realize that God has changed the course of nations with nothing more than prayer. When World War II was on, Hitler was sending his massive army against the English forces with a few of the French and a few of the Belgium soldiers there, and they were being literally, they were being driven to the sea in 1940. And the word was out that the English army, one-third of a million soldiers, were about to be annihilated by the Germans. It was going to happen. There was no hope. They were being driven to the force. And the prime minister, no, the king, King George, called for a day of prayer before God. And on May 23rd, I believe it was, the nation went to prayer. Every church was filled. Every cathedral was filled. There were long lines outside of all of these places of worship because people couldn't get in. And they began to pray. And the miracle was that God says, before you ask, I've already begun to do it. And before they had been asked, even before this prayer had happened, because many were already praying. Hitler, for some unknown reason, his generals could not understand it, ordered a halt to their army. And for three days, that army sat there, and the people prayed. And every boat that was available on the English shore crossed the English Channel and rescued the whole army, plus 140,000 other soldiers. And when Hitler proceeded to go, the beaches were empty. How did that happen? They still, to this day, call it the miracle of Dunkirk, a miracle that happened because God's people prayed. There were others who prayed that God would move and, and stop the Germans as they were coming across and flying into England. And Reese Howells and a group of Bible school students got together and prayed and turned the planes back. Why am I talking about this today? Because we can change the course of world history through prayer. We, the church, if the church will begin to seek God and pray, I can tell you today that in Ukraine, there are people praying. And there are people in America that are praying. And there are people in Russia that are praying. And there are things that are happening that should not be happening according to everybody's expectation. Putin was to move into Ukraine and in 24 hours time was to be into the capital and was to have it all sealed and set and done and it didn't happen. His soldiers got confused. They ran out of fuel. They couldn't keep they couldn't keep the supply chain going. And the people of Ukraine rose up and began to resist. And today in Russia Something like 10,000 people in Moscow 
are standing up against Putin and being arrested for doing it. But why is that happening? Because God's people are praying. There is no greater force on this earth than the power of prayer. And when we can grasp that truth and understand that God says, come and work with me to defeat the forces of hell. Come and join me. I don't need you, but I have desired it because I want you to know who I am and what I'm like. And we find that when we look at Jesus, we know who he is and what he's like. But when we join with Jesus and with him, we know in a deeper sense personally that this God that we serve is an amazing, loving, heavenly Father who cares about the world and cares about people and cares about mothers who are watching their children hungry, spending time in subway stations, baby being born there, husbands and young men sent out to fight for their nation. People are fleeing. Are we praying? Are we praying? You say, that's a long way away from us. It really doesn't affect us. You know, that's what they said about Hitler. It's a long ways away. There were those who didn't want us to have anything to do with the war over there. Can I tell you, if you don't fight it there, you'll fight it here. It's just the way it is. Despots have a way of eating everything in their way until they are stopped. And we can stop them in prayer. There is a mighty, mighty force available in prayer. Peter is in prison. He is about to be killed. It is that very day when now the feast is passed, Passover is done, and now Herod is going to bring Peter out this very day. And oh, he has made Peter so safe. Sixteen soldiers, as I understand it, four quadrants of soldiers are there surrounding him. He has two on each side of him. He is chained with two soldiers chained to him. Two more outside, the other group ready to be moved in for when their time comes. The church has been praying and nothing has been happening. And I tell you, you'll pray and nothing will happen. I prayed and prayed and prayed. Nothing happened. Because God's timing is more important than my desire for something. And Peter is sleeping, thinking, this is my last night. I will go to be with Jesus tomorrow. Just like my dear friend James did. Tomorrow will be my day. Tap on the shoulder. Man standing there. I don't know what he looked like. Did he have wings? I don't know. Did he glow? I don't know. I just know he was there and he tapped Peter on the shoulder and said, Peter, get up, get dressed. We're going out of here. And Peter got up and the chains fell off from him. He breaks every chain. The chains fell off. Peter says, I'm having a vision. I'm dreaming. Did you ever dream and think you were awake? That's what Peter is. He, he, thinks, he thinks he's dreaming. And, and they come to the door, and his guards are asleep. Those guards are asleep. They go through the door. They go through the next gate. They go through the next gate. They come to the big city gate, and the gate opens before them, and the angel disappears. And Peter says, This is real. I'm alive. I'm free. And he goes to the church that's praying. Now, I want you to remember this. This is new for the church. 
They don't have experiences like this of seeing prison doors opened. Not, not, you know, they've heard things that God can do, and they know what he did in the Old Testament. But Stephen died, and James died, and now Peter's in prison. They're praying, they're storming heaven. Oh God, move, oh God, move, set Peter free, God, move, oh God, move, work, help Peter, Lord, help him. And there's a knock at the door, and Rhoda goes to the door, and she listens, and it's the voice of Peter. She goes running in. She says, he's at the door, he's at the door. Who's at the door? Peter's at the door. You're crazy, girl. Peter's in prison. No, no, he's at the door. You're out of your mind. You're out of your mind. Yeah, you talk about praying and not believing. But remember, they don't have the experiences that we see here. And then they said, it has to be his spirit. He must be dead. His ghost has come. But he keeps knocking. They open the door. Can you imagine what it did to their prayer life when they suddenly see Peter standing there and they realize we joined with God in seeing a miracle happen. We prayed and God sent an angel. We prayed and God opened the door. We prayed and God set Peter free. We prayed and God worked. God, we love you, God. You worked and you let us be a small part of it. Prayer, such a simple thing, such a simple thing. But what is it? Prayer is, number one, praise. Thou art holy, O thou that inhabits the praises of Israel. When our prayers begin, O oh God, I need, we've sort of jumped ahead a little bit. We should begin with our prayers, oh God, we worship you. We acknowledge your presence. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed. Holy, holy, holy be thy name. Father, we worship you, we worship you. What happens when we do that? He inhabits our praise. He comes. He's there. We're conscious of his presence. When I start, oh God, I need this, I need that, I need, I need, I need. We haven't come into his presence. But when we start, Father, I worship you, I praise you. Holy, holy, holy. Oh God, I love you, I praise you. He inhabits our praise. And then he says, now bring your request. Make your request be known with thanksgiving. Lord, I want to thank you that you have heard my prayer. I want to thank you, Lord, that you know all things and that you are able to do everything. There is nothing you cannot do. God, I worship you because you are able to do exceeding abundantly above everything that I ask or think. God, I worship you. How many know you're in a better place of prayer than just start, God, I need, I need, I need? I worship you. You are able, you are worthy, worthy, worthy is the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. So prayer is more than asking. Prayer is praising and worship. Prayer is also a battle against the forces of darkness. Seeing we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, these people have seen the victory and they're watching us. What are they watching? They're watching the same type of battle that they had to go through. And so I look and I say, Lord, thank you that somebody else has been here before me. I'm compassed about with a great cloud of witnesses who witnessed to what? To the goodness of God, who witnessed to the power of God, who witnessed to the anointing of God, who witnessed to the fact that God is able to do exceeding abundantly above everything that I could ask or think. And then prayer is we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and the rulers of the darkness of this world. But be of good courage, Jesus said, for I have overcome them. You do not battle 
hear me, you do not battle on your own. You always join with him. And as you join with him, stronger is he that's in you than he that's in the world. You're on the winning team. And he says, join me. Join me in prayer. Join me. Join me in prayer. Become one with me. And he said, I'll show you great and mighty things which you've never even imagined. As we join him in prayer, seek, knock, ask, begin with prayer of praise, worship, and thanksgiving. Enter his gates with what? Thanksgiving and his courts with praise, giving praise and thanks unto him. And then you're ready to go to battle. And in the end of your life, you will look back like the Apostle Paul and say, I have fought a good fight. I have kept the faith. There is henceforth laid up for me a crown of righteousness that doesn't fade away. Amen. Would you just stand, please, as the team comes to lead us in one more song? And as they're leading, we want to give you an invitation. If you're here this morning and you need prayer, we want to pray for you. If you would like to be a part of the prayer uh, movement that God is raising up all around the world today, and you'd like to be a part of that, just come and kneel here at the altar and say, I want to pray and believe that God is going to do a great work over in the my prayer is that they will have a great revival there. Ukraine needs a revival. They need the power of God. They've, they've had a lot of, of things go on in Ukraine that have been very sinful and, and have called for judgment. So we're praying that God will do a revival of holiness in that nation. And then pray that God will drive the forces of hell back and that the enemy will be defeated. And pray that the... That the enemy that is coming against them will be bound and not able to do some of the horrendous things that he is capable of doing. He has nuclear power and he has capabilities of doing horrendous things. Bind the enemy that he will not be able to do that. So as the team leads in music, if you want to come and pray, come and join us. If you have a need for physical healing, come and join us. If you have a need for Whatever it is, just come and begin to lift your heart in worship and praise. Amen, Jesus.